What's up, guys? We are here at SHOT Show 2023. We are at the Air Venturi booth, and we're gonna tell you about their latest rifle. This is the Avenge X. Now, there is a lot to love here. Uh, the model you are seeing here is just $4.99. We'll run you through the specs in a second, but here's the overview, okay? This is a modular PCP platform. So you heard me say this model. Well, there's eight of these, all right, that they're coming out with at launch. One action, multi-caliber, so you can change calibers easily, you can change your air source easily, and then you can change the stock style to pretty much whatever you want. They have bullpups, tactical stuff, there's wood classic stocks, and then we have synthetic classic. Now we'll run you through this model. This is that entry price point of $4.99. At the back of the action here, we have that same kind of adjustable butt pad that we saw on the Avenger bullpup. We have an adjustable cheek piece that's only present here on the synthetic classic models. Uh, nice grip area. You have your hammer spring adjustment at the back. Side lever action that is reversible, so you can actually switch it around for you lefties out there. Uh, 177, 22, or 25, that bolt probe comes out with the barrel, just two screws, bam probe comes out and you are good to change that caliber very easily. Uh, there's a transfer port adjustment setting, so you have a high and low setting. Obviously, we have our dual pressure gauge system, so you've got your fill pressure gauge. It's actually labeled on the gauge, and then we have our regulator gauge over here on the left-hand side, and you do, of course, have an adjustable reg. And naturally, I don't have something to pull this up with, but that's all right. We'll show you on a different model here. Uh, on this synthetic, you've got a metal rail, uh, obviously fully shrouded barrel. You have half 20 threads at the end of the muzzle and a QD under this fill cap. So Air Venturi's got a lot of cool stuff going for him with the Avenge X. Now let's show you one of the other models here. All right, so you've seen a tube version of the Avenge X. We have the bottle version. So that tube is 210 cc's, fills to 300 bar, 4350 PSI. This carbon bottle is 390 cc's and also fills to 300 bar, and you still have a QD on the end. This is pretty sick. So you just unscrew this bottle. Uh, to, if you wanna change between a tube and a bottle, it's a couple screws, a very simple process uh, outside of degassing the gun, of course. And we mentioned that reg before. Uh, you might be able to see it in here, uh, but actually it's recessed into that hole within the stock here. Uh, but same adjustment there that you had on the Avenger up to 200 bar or 3000 PSI in terms of how high you can go on the reg. Uh, but what's really cool here is they've actually gone to a stainless steel body for the reg. It's providing a lot more stability across a wider range of pressures. So reg creep, things like that should be very well mitigated with this new regulator. Um, now, one of the interesting things to note is that obviously the Avenger did not have a transfer port adjustment. Uh, and one of the things that the Avenger, quite frankly, does not do that well is lower power stuff. So for those of you out there that want to run the gun in a barn shooting pigeons and you don't want to over penetrate, I'm just giving an example there. You throw this to low power, you can actually get this gun into those lower pressure ranges, into, you know, the uh, pressure ranges, I'm sorry, power ranges. You can get this gun into the, you know, 12 to 20 foot pound range in a 177, 22, 25. You can get it to a relatively low power uh, and it's gonna give you a ton of shots. All right, let's grab the tactical and let's talk some performance specs here. So with this bottle, uh, let's just use 22 caliber. You can expect about 180 shots. That's a ton of shots at roughly 30 foot pounds. So that's like an 18 grain pellet at about 880 or so. Uh, so 180 shots, holy cow. Off the tube version, you're looking at about 80 shots. So still pretty darn good. That's a hell of a lot of shooting uh, for a traditional air cylinder at 210 cc's, which is awesome to see. Now from a power perspective, 22.8 inch barrel, uh, very similar to the Avenger barrel. You are looking at around 30 foot pounds and 177. 50 foot pounds in 22, which is a definite upgrade, and 60 foot pounds in 25 caliber from a power output perspective. Uh, so a lot to like in this. This is a ton of adjustability, uh, and you are gonna be able to do whatever you want with this platform, which is really awesome to see. Uh, Kick-ass new rifle from Air Venturi, the Avenge X. All right, guys, Air Venturi's not done. Rifle platform's cool. We've got some more compressors as well. Now you guys know about the Nomad 3. This came out a couple months ago, but I wanna tell you about the Rove Air. Now, obviously the Nomad 3, the Nomad series of compressors had a nice long life, uh, and the Nomad 3 is still a great unit, but it is pricey, so Air Venturi drops the Rove Air. Now this thing retails at 499. 
all right? 500 bucks for a compressor that has the same fill times as the Nomad 3. Just wanna make sure that sinks in, cause that's kinda wild. So basically guys, fast fills without the frills. You're not getting a bag, you don't have the load gauge, but it's still a maintenance free unit. You've got your filter system on it. You could still run it off your car battery, 110, 220, or that 12 volt option. This Rove Air is gonna be an awesome new portable compressor option for those of you that are looking for something that's more affordable than the Nomads and some of the other units that are out there. But, Air Venturi's not done. For those of you that need to fill big carbon bottles, we have the brand new Krypton compressor. Now, this is very similar to Air Venturi's big 4,500 PSI unit, but it's a little bit faster. So we're looking at 15% or so faster than the original. You were talking about filling a 74 cubic foot bottle in under 50 minutes. That's pretty quick. And we're talking about filling from zero. I believe it takes just over an hour for the 98 cubic foot tank. And obviously, you know, your 100 cubic inch buddy bottle is gonna go real quick. Uh, outside of being a little bit faster, the big upgrade here is a new filtration system. Now this one's well used, uh, but you have desiccant beads in one end and activated charcoal in the other. So, you know, we get some people complaining about the smell of the air that comes out of the unit. That's gonna take care of that. And obviously this is gonna suck all your moisture out. So, so some nice upgrades grades and check this out price drop right now the old version of the uh, air venturi big boy compressor is 1699.99 this thing's coming in at 1599.99 so all the quality you've come to expect from these big air venturi units with some very nice upgrades we are going to head out elsewhere onto the floor but air venturi doing some great stuff here at shot 23. Hey guys, we are here at SHOT Show 2023 at the Element Optics booth with none other than Matt Dubber. If you guys don't know Matt, I don't know what the hell you've been doing with yourselves. Uh, so Matt, Element's got some new scopes this year. Oh yeah. This beast right here, uh, I'm very excited about it. Tell the folks about it. Sure, so this is the Theos 6036 by 56 first focal plane. We've actually been working on this for a number of years and uh, we've put a ton of effort into sort of trying to rethink everything that we've done so far and just take things to another level. So the, the, the turrets, for example, we've um, designed them from scratch. Um, we've got a... Let me get in there. 12 mil per revolution. Uh, you hear that? That's turn, nice and crispy. And a, and a revolution indicator. So once yeah. you flip over to the second turn, you've got a flag that pops up to tell you on your second That's turn. That's very cool. And f a zero stop, five clicks below zero. And uh, yeah, same tool-free system that's on other scopes Which as well. is awesome, yeah, one of yeah. the best out there. And this does parallax adjust down to 10. Parallax down to 10, uh, push button illumination. Yeah, so which is slick. It's nice, it doesn't can get we, in the way when you're trying to can we, front is there? Can we flip that around so Definitely. they can see it? Yeah. So uh, like a very inline build here. Yeah. So literally just push it. And I'm assuming there's d brightness levels, yeah, so a couple of them. There's 10 brightness levels. Okay, wow. Hold it in for a second to switch it on. Cycle through by pushing through. When you get to your, your 10th setting, it'll flash once to let you know you're at your brightest. Okay. So you don't cycle through endlessly trying yep. to figure out which one it is. Yeah. Um, and we've also got a capped windage turret on yep. this side. Yep. So windage is capped, but we're going to include a, uh, a windage thread protector ring over here as well so okay. if you want to leave it exposed sure. you can got it nice yeah thinking of everything yeah we have i mean something we, something we've done with a scope that very few people have actually ever done is uh we're including an aperture ring as well which reduces your objective diameter sure. to 40 millimeters yep. which just makes your depth of field a bit deeper yep. and helps you especially in like let's say you're looking at a white a white gong or a white on, on black target yep. on a very bright day and reduces chromatic aberration, makes everything sharper. It'd be nice for filming too, I assume. Yeah, oh, it makes such a big difference with scope cam nice. stuff. So, yeah, very yeah, we cool. Actually, we were just playing around with different, you know, aperture sizes, yeah. seeing what works best and everything, and decided, well, why not just include it? You can take it off if you don't want to use it. Absolutely. Low light or whatever, but um, it's nice to just have that available when you need it. So. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense to me. And th yeah. now this is for the folks at home, like a tier one kind of price yeah. point, high end, uh, where, where are we coming in at roughly? So, twenty seven ninety nine. Okay. Retail. So it's not cheap, but compared to other similar products in this sure. category, yeah. 
these this magnification range. I you're, think it's, it's you're taking the same good, so. approach that you did with the Nexus, where there really wasn't a lot in the magnification range and in that space yeah. that was of the quality level for the price. I think that's the that's the yeah. important thing for the folks at home. Like if you're if you're a bench rest competitor, PRS competitor, you want to start doing NRL 22. Uh, yeah. I, I'm going to get my hands on one of these for field target because I have to do it. Um, but like if you're doing like an air gun specific discipline and you want like probably what I'm going to assume is is the best glass you're going to be able to buy for the money. Yeah. This is going to be right right at the top of the list. I have to assume. So yeah, yeah, it, beautiful looking scope. This is awesome. Do you but like the color? I, I do. It, what do you? Matches your jacket. I was about to say, what are you calling it? I actually don't know. The, the story is Shane and I were looking at a bunch of different um, anodizing samples yeah. years ago, and we just saw one that stood out to, and both of us at the same time looked at each other and we're like, that's the one right there. Nice. So Matt, um, this was one that I didn't know about before we got to the show, and this thing is some kind of insane witchcraft thing yeah. going on here, so explain. So, I mean, the Theos was like the, the worst kept secret of, sure. like, everyone kind of knew it was coming. <laughs> yeah. No one saw this one coming at all. Yeah. Um, this is the Harper 7. Harper stands for Hybrid Precision Rifle Scope. Okay. And the reason, the word hybrid basically means that there's lots of digital rifle scopes out there, you know, where you're essentially looking at a, a little screen and there's a little camera in front of it right. picking up what's, what was there. But right. th that comes with its drawbacks. Battery life's one of them. Uh, lag is another one. Yep. You're not getting real-time view of what's done. The thing range. bombs out on you and stops working. Yeah. yeah. And resolution is always going to be yeah. an issue. But with this, you've got a completely optical system. So it's a prismatic scope with, with ED glass. Um, you're getting real-time view of what's done. You get all the benefits of an optical scope. Right. Um, but no erector tube inside with turrets, no moving parts. So it's got like an LED system, like a display, like a, it's got a heads up display thing, guys, yeah. basically. Looking through this, I mean, you've got a crosshairs with this little flashing dot in there that's telling yeah. me where to aim based off the ballistic profile, which is a whole other. Yeah, so I, it's an optical scope, but we've gone with a digital reticle. Yeah. And what's really cool that is it's super flexible. You can, I mean, as you can see behind you here, um, you've got a, a uh, uh, Element Optics Ballistics app, which we've developed, you can uh, you can create up to four profiles. It's got a whole database. You choose your pellet or your bullet or whatever. Create your profile, uh, scope heart, all that stuff. Yep, yep. You send your profiles over to the scope. Yep. And then, I mean, you'll, that profile with the ballistic calculator is built into the scope. Right. The scope senses atmospheric conditions like temperature, pressure. We'll take that into account, and you can either dial in your range, you dial in your windage as well. Okay. Or you can use an external Bluetooth range finder, which we're busy working on now. Sure, okay. When you range, the range gets sent over and your point of impact actually Updates. shows up on the scope. Yeah, which that's is insane. wild. Yeah. So, yeah. so there is not, there, I, I, there's so many features going on here, guys, that you just don't know where to begin, really. Um, but basically, for those of you out there that have ever traveled somewhere and your dope isn't quite right or whatever, like this takes care of all of that pretty much, which yeah. is, uh, that's insane. I mean, for, for a hunter, I think, because this is a 7X optic, right? Yes. Uh, for a hunter, this is like you put it on and you go and you get there and you're good. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add, it's, it's a 7X, but it's got the field of view of like a 4X. It's massive, yeah, looking so through it. You're, it's you're getting that peripheral awareness of what's around you. And I will add also, um, the, the one nice thing with having a hybrid system instead of a fully digital scope is this little AAA battery will last for weeks. Really? Weeks of continuous use. Wow, okay. We've been leaving, we've, we actually forgot this on last night. The battery's yeah. still full. It will last nice. for another week. Week wow. or two probably is okay. big on. So the, you don't have to worry about... I mean, wow. even when the battery dies, it'll go into emergency mode, okay. which will last another day. Wow, okay. So, yeah. There's a lot going on here. So pricing is TBD, guys. Yeah. Uh, but from what I've been overhearing, uh, it looks really attractive, I think, for the feature set that you're getting. Uh, yeah. And you're tying it to an app. I mean, you're going to have this rangefinder module. There's yeah. so much going on here. This is going to make your life as a shooter infinitely easier, which yeah. I think that's super cool. Man, this is intense. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right. You got anything else? That's it. Okay. All right. Element Optics, SHOT Show 2023. Matt, well done, my friend. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey guys, as you know, a lot of our scopes are rated for air guns. This year we brought out a whole new line that incorporates a lot of features that you're going to like. For instance, the Harris SPR line is available in a 2-12, to a 4-20, to and 6-24 to magnification range. 
Second focal plane options on all of them, the 624 does pick up a first focal plane option. This scope, uh, as well as the others mentioned, all go down to a minimum parallax of 10 yards. You have a precision zero stop and locking windage, which is going to make it a great cross uh, crossover scope even for powder burners. If you want to shoot center fire, magnum cartridges, it's going to be ready for that as well. The reticles we designed uh, in unison with a lot of the air gun community, they're very clean, concise, and usable for various disciplines in air gun shooting sports, as well as practical use in the field. So the Harris SPR line starts at 369 with a 2 to 12 uh, by 42 millimeter objective. That's the second focal plane. We have multiple reticle options, both mill and MOA. The 4 to 20, those are going to come in at right around $400. 420, same thing, you've got mill and MOA reticle options. Uh, all those are second focal plane. When you get into the 6 to 24, the 6 to 24 is going to retail around 569 up to 629, depending on the configuration. You've got both first and second focal plane options, mill and MOA. All right, this is our new Talos 1.5 to 5 by 32 millimeter objective scope. This is designed for today's crossbows. It's going to work for any crossbow between 300 feet and 500 feet per second. It has a BDC reticle to get you out to 100 yards. The Talos Crossbow Scope MSRP is going to come in at $229.99.